Amen. What are we doing to the Lord's name? In this day of preaching, you know, everything has changed. It seems like every preacher or every other preacher who gets up now, they preach the Lord is about to do this or the Lord is about to do that for us. We, we spend much time talking about what God is about to do for us. Or many sermons that deal with because you've gone through this or you've gone through that, God is about to give you an overflow. You know, things that uh, people love to hear. So Everybody wants their overflow because I'm telling you, one of the things that uh, makes me a little different I've just never, and I'm not going to, I, have, I will not buy into this victim mentality. I am nobody's victim. Amen. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. Everybody in life hadn't beat up on me. Everybody in life haven't done me wrong. And I don't feel like I'm deserving of this great big thing from God because after all, everybody's done me wrong and have mistreated me, and oh, God is about to kill them and do something for me because everybody mistreated me. As a matter of fact, I'm due blessings because I did right, and, and, and everyone else in the world did wrong, so God owes me something. Victim mentality. Some of us are grown, and we're still mad with our parents. That woman done divorced you and on her third marriage and you still hurt from what happened years ago. You have to shake that stuff. You can't, you can't let, God bless you, Sister Smith. Welcome back. You, you can't let people do that to you. And so the preachers now, uh, uh, you know, they, they know how to make us think that this gigantic thing is about to happen because... God owes us, and uh, everything now is about uh, getting better because we're, we're, God's in our debt, and you know what I mean, uh, this, this victim lifestyle of preaching, I, I mainly call it conning, we, we con people into believing that the Lord God of the Bible uh, is in their debt, and, and you always hear about what God is about to do. I notice this, it's always, though, it's always scheduled to happen a week after they leave. So, it ain't never real time. See, no, not, not by the end of service while they're still in town. It's after they're gone, three days, <laughs> 10 days later. That way they don't have to answer for that con job they just did to you. So they're gone, perpetrating the fraud on the next unsuspecting group of people. And so we are all this preaching now uh, uh, because of what we've gone through and because of what people have said about us. I've never met, uh, I don't think that the African American, let me rephrase what I'm about to say. If the African Americans of the 60s and 50, 50s and 60s would have had the mentality that we have today, that would have been no civil rights games because we were not tough enough. We label every challenge, every headache, every setback as going through or a satanic attack, or the devil is coming after me, or God, where are you? As though we're, as though we're only to expect good. I like what Job said. He said, am I only to expect good from the hand of the Lord and never evil? Am I, am I, am I actually under the impression that I'm so special that in my life, everything should always go my way? 
that I should feel like a champ every day. And if I don't, that means that there is something wrong. And we, and, and we, and we hear this played out. As, some, it's, as, as soon as something goes wrong, we, we ask God, Lord, what have I done? Have I sinned? Have I done you wrong, Lord? You know what's behind that? That's, that, that implies that what is happening to me, I must have done something to deserve it. I must have done wrong because, you know, bad things can't happen to me. You know, like they do everybody else. You, you're ready to leave your marriage. You're ready to bail because you're going through a strain. Well, don't, don't remarry. Because I don't care you can find Mr. Wonderful. He's wonderful because you don't know him. And you're wonderful because he don't know you. Praise the Lord. But you will, you will discover that ain't nobody wonderful all the time. No one is agreeable all the time. All we're going to do is, is just lay there. We're going to get married, just stare in each other's eyes. Sooner or later, somebody's going to say, I got to go eat. <laughs> uh, why, you know, while we're staring, <laughs> can I take a bathroom break? <laughs> Life. <laughs> Life. See, we're, 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 we're being conned. We're being, we're being conned. And, uh, and so we, we, the, the, the outcome is, is a bunch of uh, people who are so easily hurt. And, uh, and so we make you, we, 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 we do something in your head because we use smart sounding words. Now for this season that's about to take place. And, and nothing is a time anymore. Everything's a season. Uh, in this season of the service. And you got to say it right. In this season of your life. God. This season. And there you go, bind it, hook, line, and sinker. The Lord has spoken to me about this season in your life. And for the next season, the Lord God is going to do da da da. Oh my God. We buy it. Oh, we just, we just, we're like, we're like the, we're like the, the, the girls, we're like the women Dracula put a spell on. I mean, we're hooked and just buy this stuff. And, and, and they're just talking. They have learned how to appeal to the baser nature of people. The baser nature of everyone is our being selfish, wanting something that benefits us. You know, you sound, we like to sound smart. One of the smart sounding words everybody's using now is transparency. You know, you got to be transparent. And you got to be transparent. I told a preacher the other day, he spoke to us, he talked about being transparent. I said, come here, man, I want to give you a biblical word. There's a biblical word that uh, you might want to include just a little bit of. In, in terms of, you know, the guy, I understand transparency. That's a, good, that's a good popular one. I want to give you a good biblical word. He said, what's that? Discretion. So you, you can lay yourself bare before everybody if you want to and sit down with all your friends and share all your deepest, darkest secrets in the name of being transparent. All that will work until you fall out. All that. It's all good, uh, sister. It's all good, sister. Because Lord have mercy until you fall out. Or until you and your four friends, right? all y'all running together, right? You get elevated and the other three don't. And they know what you did because you told all of a sudden, you know, the, 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 the secrecy covenant, the uh, all of a sudden now transparency will work against you. And I, and I use a public example. A public example. You know what I told him? Suppose I would have told Earl Cobb something that I would not have wanted repeated. I called him by name since it was a public thing. He would have destroyed me with it. Because he sure would have told me. So I'm not saying uh, don't um, um, uh, talk to people. But I am saying read the Bible. Proverbs warns. Proverbs teaches of the value of being discreet. I didn't say being slick, but being discreet. Not everybody can take what you got to tell. Them. Well, I just want to reveal this stuff to you about 
Me. Man, you know, you, look, you, you finish revealing? Why are you talking? They're getting up. Grabbing their grip. So, well, where, where you go? I got to go. I got to go. Amen. I don't, I don't want to be around them. When we go do battle at the abortion clinic, uh, there, there are some who have had abortion themselves. I remember one time someone asked me, well, Pastor, you think I should share my story? I said, it's up to you. You're not obligated. I don't recommend that you do. I don't recommend that you don't. But, but uh, uh, you have to be prepared, though. You have to be prepared for them to take it wrong. You have to be prepared for them to say, well, since you did it, who are you to talk about me? You have to be prepared if those who are working with you and don't know, you don't know how they're going to respond. The truth is, if Jesus' story don't save people, your story won't either. We are called to preach the gospel. Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel. That'll do it. Amen. 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 Telling them about what happened eight years ago and, and God graced you and nobody knew until you told it. That may not work for you uh, in, 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 in the future. That's something. But in this, let me get, let me get deep. Let me get back on. Uh, in this season, <laughs> I, got to, I got to practice it. In this season, God. This season. Am I saying it right? In this season. So everybody's in this. Yeah. You, 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 you've just come out of a hard season. And God's, God's getting ready to bring you through a good season. So everybody's claiming their season. Um, and I know what the Bible says. Do, I know the Bible teaches due season. And you shall reap if you faint not. Amen. But the Bible also teaches that as long as uh, the, the Lord is God, there's going to be all seasons. See, all of you. Seed time, harvest, you, all the seasons. Summer, spring, winter for all seasons. You ain't gonna never get a blessing where for the rest of your life it's just gonna be summer season. No, 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 no. All seasons. Are you with me? The point is, we're being taught to believe that our relationship with the Lord is that of the Lord constantly doing for us and God constantly giving us things. And, it, and it, helps, uh, it helps explain why there are so many uh, embittered and, in, and in, uh, upset believers because real life doesn't work that way. In, in the real world, good things happen and, and bad things happen. In, in the real world, uh, you, you, you get sick and you get well, but you get sick again in the real world. Things happen. In the real world, people die. Amen. I know a preacher who lived in a la-la land. Thought he was going to live uh, until uh, he get to be a hundred and uh, uh, some astronomical number. But in the real world, he died premature. Life is that way. So you want, you want to tamper your expectations. See, because what happens is the Lord didn't save us for us to be self-centered. We, we were never saved. God didn't put you in the kingdom for, all, for it all to revolve around you. And it doesn't all revolve around me. It all revolves around him. And we have to find our place in him. And, and do you know that your place in God varies? It varies. Sometimes the Lord will put, give you a place in him that places you on the stage. In front of everybody. But don't assume that you're married to that stage. Because it may be his will the next time you sit down in the audience. One night at AIM, they put me on the platform. I, I sat where they told me to. Man said, leave seven chairs. I left eight. I said, I want you to sit in the seventh chair. I said, I'll sit in the eighth chair. That's it's fine with me. It's just a seat. Then the next night, they said, well, the, the I saw empty seat, but they said, the platform is full. I went right over there and found me a seat and sat down beside a friend of mine. Then they came back and said, we have a better seat for you. Do you want to move? We said, no, 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 we're fine. Just where we are. Because life is like that. Life is, you got to fit where God places you. But that might change. 
Those of you, you young married couples, you, you remember, you said for better or for worse, richer or poor, sickness and health. Don't think better, richer, health. Because the other side's coming too. Amen. And you got to be able to deal with that. And it might, you might have a, just a run where everything's just better. Just everything's clicking for you. You got, got your house, you got this, you got that. Everything's working for you. And then, so you assume this is where it's going to always be. And then something happened. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't that you sinned. It wasn't that you were late. It, it could be that you did everything right. But the chief executive officer messed up. And when he messed up, he lost the contract. You've been coming to work, doing everything on time, doing everything right. But he messed up. Next thing you know, they're laying you off because he messed up. Now, at that point, you got to know that God is still good. The Lord is still faithful. The Lord is still worth serving. And couple, now it's going to be a little lean for you. But stick together. Amen. Doesn't all revolve around us. Some of you are wonderful when you're being praised. But you're not equipped to be checked. Life gives both. You get rebuke and praises. Praise the Lord. Especially from superiors, from family, from parents. Parents don't just compliment your children. Pop them when necessary. Amen. Correct them when necessary. Amen. Check them when necessary. Well, I treat my child like my child's an adult and let my child have equal say. Well, you raise a monster. You all not treat them like they're an adult until they become one. Until they become an adult, they're not one. As a child. Praise the Lord. And you treat a child like it's a child. And you will help your child. Little, if any, consideration seems to be given in this day and time to how we make God look. We are so involved with what we want him to do for us. Do we give any consideration to what we are doing to him? To what impression we are giving people about him. Amen. Little of any consideration seems to be given to whether or not we cause people to want Jesus, love Jesus, serve Jesus, be like Jesus, based on what they see in us. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3, and verse 2 says, you are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. I'm looking at the Gospel of Matthew, book of Genesis, book of Exodus, looking at Luke, John, looking at the book of Revelations. I'm looking at the Pentateuch, the Decalogue. I'm looking at the Bible while looking at you. Because many of us are the only Bible that the lost will read until they get saved based on what they see in us. Uh, what is their impression of the Lord? We might not shout today. What does our lifestyle convey to the rest of the world about Jesus. What do we cause the name, do we cause, excuse me, the name of the Lord to be praised, extolled, and respected, and loved by our lifestyle? And when I say lifestyle, I am not speaking of social standing. I'm not speaking of zip code. I'm not speaking of the cost of the suit or whether or not it's a nice car. I'm talking about our uh, conflict resoluting, resolution, 
I'm talking about um, how we handle everyday life. I'm talking about our attitude and disposition. Speaking of what happens to us when we get disappointed uh, at work. So, someone was sharing with me the, a Christian who, got, uh, who, had, who had planned to leave a place, had planned to leave the place, but the place let the person go before they gave their notice. And, and, the, and the person just got crazy and went ballistic and, and uh, cussed everybody out. Just, well, it was so bad, the person couldn't even remember what they said <laughs> themselves. And, uh, and, 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 and yet all the time that the person worked with those people, the person named the name of Christ. An individual said to me, he said, after all that they said they did to them, that they, they said that they did, the question was, well, why did you go off like that? Since you had already planned to quit anyway. I don't know. So maybe they were going by that scripture, do it to them before they do it to you. <laughs> For those who don't read the Bible, that's not in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a scripture. Let me fix it. Bible says, as you would men do unto you, do unto them likewise. But why did you go off since you had planned to do that anyway? Right. You went off, but you had planned to go off. Right. Literally. Literally. The story goes that a man was caught and charged with embezzlement. He gave his reasons for his embezzling ways. He said, I have two families. I have two wives. I have two homes. And I don't make enough money to keep them up. Um, I guess he divorced one and taking care of that one and got another one, whatever the case may be. But what he did was he turned to crime. And began to embezzle, he was a banker, began to embezzle from the bank to support the families. And the people were shocked to horror when he asked them in his parting comments, he asked them, should I, I just want to get your opinion, he said to them, it's a true story, should I fulfill my preaching engagements uh, this Sunday because I'm a pastor at a local church. The damage was done. Upon the people hearing that, the people castigated that church and quickly dismissed that church. All the members, they quickly called all of them a bunch of hypocrites. They quickly uh, dismissed the gospel as hogwash. Yeah, they quickly dismissed his God as non-existent. He did, worse than embezzling, he did damage to the cause of Christ. Question is, how much, what are we doing to the Lord's name? Amen. I'm not getting any amens today. Someone said this, if of Jesus Christ their only view may be what they see of him in you, what do they see? What is the opinion that people have of Jesus when they look at me? This is totally different from the normal because the norm is what God is about to give you. And how the Lord is getting ready to reward you. But before he gives you anything, the Lord told me to talk to us about what we are doing to him. Because all of us are saved with an obligation. The other day, our people got upset with Target. Target tried to diversify and got in trouble. 
thought they would reach out and from what I'm told, if I've got it wrong, you'll correct me, uh, and, and uh, give some business to an African-American card company, people who write greeting cards. You got Hallmark, you got Mahogany, you got this one. So they, who well, I understand, they reached out and helped another little up-and-coming company that one of us owned. And the card for Father's Day recognized my baby daddy. That is the father of my illegitimate child. Now, that is a term we invent. But when we saw it in the store, it looked so ugly. You, we saw it for what it was. And oh, we cried, racism, and I'm not shopping at Target anymore. And oh, I, I think it was Target. If, I, if I'm wrong with that, y'all let me know. And then all that. But, 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 but that is a look or a sound or something that we brought on our set. You can never expect other people to respect you more than you respect yourself. Your pants hanging off your rear. Walk like you are a Neanderthal. You talk while everybody else is learning new uh, languages. We we are uh, majoring in ebonics and the first to argue about being disrespected. But we many times disrespect ourselves. The question is the blasphemous things that are said about us. To what degree do we own it? I warned the other Sunday that preachers have to be careful. Preachers now preach more against churches and, 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 and church goers than they preach against sin. I was, there was this singer, it's Sunday's best girl. Uh, what's her name? The Johnson girl. Oh, she's cussing the church out and uh, using all kind of language. I guess somebody, you know, the buzzword is church hurt. I guess somebody, I don't know, maybe they didn't give her a contract. I don't know what happened. She may even have a point. But, because I don't know her, uh, I, I'm not a fan of Sunday's best. I, I think it's a failed concept. You see how quiet you got then? I mean, watch what you want to watch, but it, it's a failed concept. It is the Christian it is the Christian's version of American Idol. It is the voice Christianized. Only problem it is that they're not being honest. Oh, we come to have church. No, you didn't. It's a singing contest. Be honest. We, well, we're going to worship the Lord. No, we're not. It's a singing contest. It's a, it's a contest. It's a singing contest to see who can perform the best. It's a performance. Amen. Now, if we're going to sing God's praises, we're going to sing God's praises, and ain't nobody going to get no, no one's going to get a first place competition, first place trophy, third place, whatever. Ain't nobody going to win a contract. We're going to sing his praises. Because we're not singing his praises for a contract. We're singing his praises because he's good and worthy to be praised. But if we're going to make a contest out of it, I feel you behind me, choir. I feel the resistance. But I'm right. I feel them. They love me, but I feel it. I told you to go and watch what you want to watch. Go on, go on and sing for them. I'd, I'd vote for you. <laughs> when you get back home, I mean, you might, you're, the, you, you're number one in my house before you leave. But so, you know, you get these people, they're not saved, they don't love the Lord. They just know how to sing like it. And then name the name of Christ and say all that stuff. 
Get on television and encourage everybody at the award show to pray. And uh, young actor the other day, and we were just so happy. You need to pray. Learn how to pray. All that. Next thing you know, in a beer commercial. See, it's things like that that do damage to the call. The Bible said, let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. They didn't say that you wouldn't have it, but he does say you got to come out of it. Some of you are looking at me like you wish I would have started my vacation yesterday. I'm, I'm going pre I'm, I'm to preach to the lights. Because you know, because some of you now, I can read and you send the singer. Some of you let, you, you let the preacher know by your expression. Don't look at me for support. And you know what? When I, when I find out that I can't look at you for support, I don't look at you. Because I, I want some support. <laughs> I want to amen. But if I, if I don't get any, I just preach to the lights. And now that we have a screen up there, while I look at the lights, I see me. And I'm going to tell me, amen. Amen. In our text, I want to show you something. Paul, having already criticized the Gentiles, Criticized the Gentiles for intentionally suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. Amen. Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed against all ungodliness. From, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold or who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because they don't want to do right. They suppress the truth. That is the truth about God that was available to them by observation and interpretation of the world around them. God revealed himself to the Gentile world by creation. Bible says in Romans 1, 19 and verse 20, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, those who suppress the truth. For God have, look at this, showed it to them. God showed himself to the human race, to the Gentile world. He revealed himself. What about people who, who lived before God ever revealed himself. There are no people who live before God revealed himself. For the Lord revealed himself. He says right there, he showed himself unto them. Look at this. For the invisible things of him, look at this, of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead even his divinity so that they were not without excuse you see that so that they are that, that is without excuse God revealed himself through nature and through observation quick minds intelligent people could look at all that he created and learn that there is a God, that there is a, he's a holy God, he's a moral God, praise the Lord, he's brilliant, he's eternal. All of these things was revealed through nature. He gave, the Bible says that God never left himself without a witness, for he gave them rain in their season. Sunshine in their season. Praise the Lord. He let the crops grow. He, he did all kinds of things. So in God's mind, in God's mind, man has never had a reason to not serve him. For he revealed himself to the human race long before 
there was a Bible. Long before there was a law. Long before there was a Moses. God revealed himself through nature. Through creation. Through observation. Nature concludes that there is a God. Can I get a witness? See. Yes, he revealed himself. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, through Romans chapter 2, uh, up to our text, Paul deals mainly with God dealing with the Gentiles. As a matter of fact, he said this uh, about the, the, the Gentiles. He says in Romans chapter 2, this, this is good stuff, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. It says, um, uh, for there is, verse 11, for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned even without the law, Gentiles, shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law, Jews, shall be judged by the law. Law of Moses there. All right? Look at this. For the hearers, there's a little telltale here. For the hearers of the law, uh, uh, look at this. For not the hearers of the law are justified before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Then he goes back to his point. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, they didn't have Moses, do by nature the things that are con contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. For when there were Gentiles who never heard of Moses, and they still did right. They never heard the Decalogue. They never heard the Ten Commandments. But they, did, they still uh, remembered the Sabbath and kept it holy. They still uh, didn't put any God before him. They, when they, without the law, did everything that was contained in the law, that showed that God, through nature, had put a law in them. Can I get a witness? Isn't that something? Oh, the Bible is just something. It says, uh, verse uh, 15, which show the works of the written law in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, uh, and, and their thoughts, uh, the main, the meanwhile, look at this, accusing or else excusing them. That is, their mind became a praise the Lord, a sort of debate form. And God dealt with them in their minds through the things that they saw. This is why Romans chapter 1 is so bad because there was no reason for mankind, after God revealed himself to man through nature, there was no reason for man to take God's revelation and, and, and go wrong with it. It says in verse 21 of Romans 1, because that when they knew God. They knew him. He revealed himself. He showed himself. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And look at this. And neither were thankful. They knew him. No Moses, no law, no prophets, no Daniel, no Jeremiah. None of them born yet. And yet the human race knew God. And they intentionally chose, despite the natural law and revelation, despite God showing himself to man, they chose to not glorify him as God. They became unthankful, and, uh, and look at this, but became vain in their thinking and their foolish hearts. Hear me, hear me today. When you reject the knowledge of God, oh my God, it's amazing what you will do and will believe. The Bible says their foolish hearts were darkened. That is, they lost the ability to reason correctly. And you know that they lost their minds because they changed the glory. All of a sudden, that stupidity uh, became uh, good reasoning in their mind. They began to believe stupid things. Witchcraft. Stupid things. The woke movement. Stupid things. Other fake, false religions. 
Perversions came in. Men started lusting after men. Stupid things. Praise the Lord. Uh, women with women. Stupid things. Preach wouldn't. They, they, they began to believe that there were other doctrines and philosophies that were either equal or superior to the revelation of God. Stupid things. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Why? Because they turned from the revelation that God had given them through nature. Somebody shout, what? what? A mighty God we serve. He revealed himself. And look at this. The Bible says, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Oh, isn't that foolish? You're going to make something uh, look like you and worship it. I'm not worshiping anything I create. Because I'm superior to whatever I create. Why would I make a statue and bow down to what I just made? You got to be a fool to do that. The Bible says their, their reasoning was darkened. They, they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God, made it like it to the image of corruptible man. And look at this, like birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God, when they did it, gave them up uh, to uncleanness. Look at this, notice that behavior. Uh, through the lust of their own heart. Deacon Miller, their hearts didn't have this lust when they recognized God's revelation. But when they turned from God, their hearts began to long for things that they never would have longed for. See, when you turn away from the Lord, the issue is not that you turn from God. You better be scared of who and what you're going to turn to. Because everybody's going to serve somebody. Everybody's got to turn to something. So when they turn from the law, mankind, their foolish hearts was darkened and God, God didn't curse them. He just gave them over. He says, okay, you want these fake gods? You can have them. You want this? You can have them. The worst thing God can do is give you over to yourself. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do right. One, I don't want or two men, the Holy Spirit will leave you alone. Once he does that, then you begin to practice self-destructive behavior. Praise the Lord. It is, it is estimated that 123, 20, 123 times a day someone commits suicide in this country. But 10,000 times a day men self-destruct. Only 123 times a man may take his own life. That's 123 times too many. But thousands of times a day, men practice self-destructive behavior because they turn from God. When you turn from God, you practice, you, you, what, whatever reasoning you listen to, it's not to your advantage. They, can I get a witness? God gave them up, look at this, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. What did they do? Who changed? The word change here is literally exchange. Who exchanged the truth of God into a lie? That is, they traded in God's truth and bought the devil's lie. Left God. Left the truth and bought a lie. Bible says in Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth, sell it not. Don't you ever Turn away from God's truth. The truth will make you free. Yes, I feel something now. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. And he says, uh, who exchanged the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the, cre uh, served the creature more than the creator. But it didn't change the status of the creator. He's still blessed forever. See, the Lord is blessed whether I bless him or not. He's good whether I acknowledge it or not. He's worthy whether I praise him or not. He's blessed forever. Somebody ought to bless the Lord who's blessed forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want you to know why you're blessing him. He's blessed whether we bless him or not. He's good whether we acknowledge it or not. So I just want to acknowledge the fact that my God is a good God. And uh, he means everything to me. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, he's blessed forever. Look at this. Then he says, for this cause, because 
They failed to bless him. God gave them up. Look at this. They begin to change from the inside out. Inside out. Facebook might have a problem with this. God gave them up. Zuckerberg might have a problem uh, with uh, to, to vile affections. We got a little reprieve right now. But they were, they were rushing toward outlawing uh, different parts of the Bible as hate speech. President Trump, with his cussing ways, represents a reprieve from that. We're not running to the left like we were. Praise Lord. They, they, they were planned to label portions of Scripture as hate speech. This is why, this is why the, the victory for the baker was so important. You better know what time it is. You better know what time it is. Praise the Lord. Oh my. When they can force you to do things that are against your religion. The issue with the people behind trying to destroy the baker wasn't a cake. It's freedom of religion. It's the freedom to practice our religion the way we want. Because that's, that's a problem with Christianity. That's two major problems with Christianity in this world today. Number one, the exclusivity of Christ. Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. The world, Brother Northington, can't stand that because the world wants us to accept all these other religions also. But Jesus said, that's one way. One. Somebody shot one. Ah, one. And the other problem with Christianity is that the rich has a rich, powerful minority in this country. They got money. They got power. They have influence. They have, they, they're good now. They're good at what they do. They infiltrated the American Psychiatric Association. They infiltrated the public school system. They own Hollywood. They've infiltrated the sports arena. Banking arena. And they're trying to infiltrate the church. They're called the LGBTQ and whatever community. God, God, the Bible slaps them in the face for the Bible calls their affections. Their affections. See, you ain't got to commit it. The affection. God called it vile. Says for this cause, God gave them over to vile affection. You, you see why I wouldn't make a good politician? Because if I was running for office, my enemy would find this message and pull up and make a, make a commercial. Look at what he said. He called, he called it vile. They, they, they would keep you vile, 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 vile. Yeah, they're vile. They'll do it. You know how they do vile. He called it vile. That's how they do it. And you know what? You know what? Church people wouldn't vote for him. You wouldn't say, well, we don't want people to think that we're judging. Well, God said vile. Vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. See, because nature, God had revealed himself through nature. The natural law. Women, you don't have to be smart to figure out you weren't made to be together. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my son. I don't have to. I don't have to become rated PG to, to, to teach that. I, I, I have to be. I'm, I'm not gonna be rated R, and I'm not going rated X. Just G, rated G. Rated G. If you have the acumen of a one-year-old, you know. Mm -mm. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. And then likewise, the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in the lust one toward another. I didn't mean to preach all this today. 
men with men. Working that which is unseen. See, this is the problem with Christianity. And when you hear people attacking religious freedom, this is the stuff that they want. This is the stuff they want to attack. See, they, yeah. and see, some of you you, 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 you don't know what to do. So you just, you're sitting there, you're scared to look up, you can't say amen. And you're looking down and you're finding out that I'm reading the Bible verbatim. I'm reading it. I'm not adding anything. It's the Bible. It's the Bible. It's the Bible. Well, some people interpret the scripture different ways. How do you interpret that? Come on. Be brave. You come and how do you interpret? How else do you interpret? There's no two interpretations. There's no ten. The Bible says no prophecy of the scripture was given for any private interpretation. Well, I know that's what the Bible said, but that ain't what it says to me. Well, it's not given for private interpretation. The Bible says what it says. So, yes, let me, oh, I feel my help. Uh-huh. So now, he, he, he rebukes them because when they went against, back to my text here, they went against God's revelation of himself. And they began to listen to the devil. And he messed up their minds. Messed them up. Folks started worshiping him. Birds. Four-footed beasts. People started worshiping the statues. People began to come up with all kinds of strange religions and ways. Men looked at each other. It's like a man being turned on, uh, looking in the mirror at himself. Now, you know something wrong with that. And the women, the same thing. And the world got messed up. But then I heard him, I heard him, I heard him, I heard him say, now, I dealt with the Gentiles. Let, let me deal with, with the Jew. He said, now, verse 17, behold, thou art called a Jew. The name Jew, praise the Lord, described, originally used to describe a member of the tribe of Judah, to describe residents who lived in Judea, over time, the word Jew went to describe all Hebrews, all members of the Israeli race, all the descendants of Abraham are called Jews. Can I get a witness? So now Paul here uh, speaks to the born again Jews in the church at Rome. And he says something to them. Are you with me? He says, now you rely on the law. Do you see that? So you rest in the law. And uh, the truth is, they had good reason to rest in the law. Because God had blessed the Jews. Can I get a witness? He gave them, praise the Lord, a tremendous revelation. The Jews had a much fuller knowledge of God available to them which they recognized and in which they took considerable pride in. They had something that God didn't give anyone else. He gave the Gentiles a revelation of himself through nature, but he gave the Jews a revelation of himself through writings. That they had to understand the sun. But I didn't leave it up to the sun and the birds for you. I had Moses to write it down. Oh, Lord. Which revelation do you think is plainer? You trying to discern God through the sky? Or God giving you a book? And God giving you prophets? And God giving you Moses? And God giving you a law? And contained in that law was all of God's expectation for human behavior. Contained in that law was written how to worship him. 
Contained in that law was written how to build the, the tabernacle. Contained in that law was the marriage laws. Contained in that law was the, was, uh, the explanation for human sexual behavior. Contained in that law was how, praise the Lord, to deal with diseases and sicknesses. The law had in it, praise the Lord, holy days and what we needed to put on and how we needed to live. All of this contained in the law. Contained in the law, we learned that his name was Jehovah. And then we learned that he's the almighty God. Then we learned he's Yahweh. Then we learned in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All of this stuff contained in the law. Any way you look at it, he gave the Jews a superior revelation. And he said, yes, you rely on the law and you rely on it with good reason because there are good things in the law. The law here is a reference to Moses and the Old Testament. And so you rest in the law. The law was put in place to give us a healthy society. The law was put in place. We learned the difference between felonies and misdemeanors. In the law, we learn thou shalt not steal. From the law, we learn how to uh, respect each other's property. Uh, from the law, we learn that you don't remove the old landmarks. We learn how to honor our mother and father. From the law, they had good reasons. They had good reasons to rest in the law. And uh, because they had the law, they had a good reason <laughs> to boast in God and boast they did they boasted in the Lord because the law in the law for you Bible students out there in the law we find the Shema and the Shema is the most important passage of scripture to any Jew in the Bible in the world even to this day Deuteronomy chapter 6 the Shema says in Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, O hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And when you got that in writing, you got a reason to shout. And the Jews boasted when they saw gods of other nations. They said, we know that those are false gods because our God is the true God. He's the living God and the everlasting King. We have the law. And not only Paul says you boast in God, and he says you also know his will and you approve the things that are excellent. This is powerful right here because it shows verse 17 through 18 shows that the Jews are second to none to boast in God. They know his will and were equipped to approve the things that were excellent because they knew his will. They were qualified to say this is good and this is not based on their knowledge of the law. God gave no other race of people a greater revelation of himself than he gave the Jews. He gave the rest of the world nature, but he gave the Jews his word. But here's a problem here. To whom much is given, much is required. So they had the written word and the Gentiles, they had a hazy view of God, but the Jews had a, the brilliant light if they wanted to know something about him. All they had to do is consult Moses, consult uh, the writings of Daniel, consult Isaiah, consult the prophets, and they knew what God thought. But the Gentiles didn't have this. Can I get a witness? The Jews were qualified. They were the most equipped to evaluate things concerning God's estimation and comparing things in the light of God's absolute standards. But as powerful as the law was, there is always a problem. See, when God gives you privilege, unfortunately, one of the things that uh, follows privilege, I wish I had a prayer in church, one of the things that privilege produces is that privilege produces a air 
of superiority. Now, when God privileges you, don't get grand. Don't get superior. Don't get a big head. Keep on walking with your feet on the ground and he'll keep on blessing you. But when the Lord gave you, he gave them a superior revelation. And that revelation, they knew that they were privileged to have it and it affected the way they affected uh, they treated everyone else so they walked in with the Gentiles and they saw themselves as being superior to the Gentiles they saw themselves as knowing everything and the Gentiles knowing nothing they, they called themselves a, a guide to the blind a light to them that are in darkness an instructor of the foolish a teacher of babes so yeah because we have the law you Gentiles you don't have it so you're just dumb. Let me tell you something, saints. The higher God takes you, the sweeter you ought to become. The higher the Lord elevates you, the more you ought to say hello to people. The higher God elevates you, the more you ought to go out of your way to shake people's hands, to show people kindness. Because to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah! Yeah, Lord! Somebody praise him in here. Somebody shout, get off your high horse. Come down, come down. Because if the Lord had blessed you, be thankful, but stay sweet. Be thankful. But stay loving, be thankful, but don't get grand, and he'll take you higher, higher, yeah. And another reason you ought to stay sweet is that no tree grows to the sky. No, hallelujah, tree grows to the sky. No, no one goes up forever. Be careful how you treat folk on your way up because you'll see those same people on your way down. But what goes up must come down. my help in here they went up they were arrogant they were mean they treated the Gentiles like they knew nothing I can't get any help and then messed around here and talk about what we said because we have the law but what they didn't understand was that the law was awesome but the law was not comprehensive but let me before I deal with that just give me, just give me two more, a few more Kojic minutes. He gets them. He said, now you can teach everybody else. You can instruct everyone else. He said, but I got one problem. I notice that your superior knowledge of the law, I notice that your superior revelation of God, it gave you pride of race, pride of religion, but I notice that you had knowledge without transformation. You had profession without performance. Good God Almighty, because he noticed that with all they knew, it didn't change them. Now, I haven't asked you to say anything to your neighbor today. Ask your neighbor. Uh, is your, how has your knowledge of God affected you? See, I, I know, I know you can teach me. I know you can tell me, but I wanna know what change has it wrought in you. I know we can sing about it. I know we can clap our hands, but what God wanna know is what change has it wrought in us. What would your husband say about your attitude? What would your wife say about the way you handle things? What would your co-workers say? 
Would they say you have high talk and low walk? Or would they say that you are living what you talk about? What would they say? Oh, you go to church? What? Church not in you. Said you Jews here. Says now, you, you, you teach. Yeah, you're good at it. You're good at it. So I'm, I'm coming down now. I don't say the top is long. Uh, must be. I don't know. <laughs> says now, you, you, you teach uh, that a man. Says you teach others. He says, I mean, Paul just, he stops shadow boxing. He goes right for the juggler. Brain. He says, I, I have a question. Uh, do you teach yourself? No, no, you did a good job teaching me. Pastor, you told it last Sunday, but, but, but what was I like last Monday? Hey, we can tell it, but can we live it? We can sing it. But can we walk it? That was the question. He said, so, uh, I mean, Paul's bad. He said, now nah, we, you know, I, 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 just, I spent a chapter and a half questioning the Gentiles. But you Jews, come in. Me? Yeah, you. Come in. Uh, you teach uh, that a man, as a matter of fact, he said, you preach that a man should not steal. Look at this. He just picked out four particulars. I got a question for you. Are you a thief? Because now, the, the answer was implied in the question. So, oh yeah, yeah, you've been teaching the Gentiles. You did a good job. You're talking to them all over, you're going all over their head. But do you steal? Malachi said this whole nation have robbed God. How, how, how you rob them? Tithe and offering. You, you, you preacher, you love the church, you, you want to you wanna preach, but do you tithe and support it? How about that? Missionaries, how much, how much fervor do you have about giving to it? Oh, I know you want, I know you want this. But God says, uh, do you steal? He says, you teach that a man should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? I was, one of the writings was talking about one of the famous rabbis who was known as an adulteress. So wait a minute, you talk about it. You, you, you told all the Gentiles to come out of it. But do you do it? See, you, you're the best. Oh, I never heard anybody teach it. Uh, you Gentiles, like you've taught it. But what are you doing? He said, you teach that a man should not, uh, you abhorous idols. You can't stand false gods. Oh, them false gods, they ain't no good. They're not gods. They're just vain. They're, they're birds, four-footed beasts. You know Romans chapter 1. All that, all them false gods. But, you will go in those temples and uh, find those false gods that are inundated with diamonds and jewels and pearls, them gods that you can't stand. And you'll pick them up and go sell them to make that money. <laughs> So now, if they're that bad, they're, they're like a saint uh, in the lottery line. If it's that bad, if it's that bad, what are you doing? He says, thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorous Thou God. He asked him, would you breaking it? Aren't you dishonoring God? You know, we, 
We don't want nobody as, as, as African Americans to dishonor us, but we dishonor ourselves. We do it. We do it. We do it. It's like, it's like, I guess I can't say it no more. It's like that word. Well, we can say it, but can't nobody else say it. Because someone else said it, it's, it's, it's wrong. But if we, we can say it, though. You, you, I mean, you can't have it both ways. We dishonor ourselves. It's dishonor when we want it to be. It's almost like sexual harassment. It's not harassment until they don't like it. Same act. <laughs> when you fell out, show was on. Or right, next thing you know, standing there in court crying. Uh-huh. You're right. That's right. Dead. Done. Y'all don't like my preaching. He said to them, for the name of God is blaspheme through you Gentiles. To blaspheme is to speak evil of. To blaspheme is to put down. Nathan told David, through your act of being with Bathsheba and killing Uriah, you have brought great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme his name. How, how are we going to say Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter is a big supporter of Planned Parenthood? How, how can that be true? Now, Black Lives may count, but they don't matter. How, you can't have it both ways. It matter, but you kill us. Most ain't going to preach it like this. Yeah. You know what? I'm too frank for many. See, that, that stuff wouldn't be saying, but they don't ever cite what I've said that was wrong. It just doesn't suit their sensibilities because the truth is not welcome. See, we, we cause the Lord's name to be blasphemed. Now, the Jews, now, they, they had the law and they caused the Lord's name to be blasphemed. I meant to bring this part down. We have, we don't have the law. We don't have the law. No, sir. We got the law and the New Testament. We have both Testaments. At the time Paul wrote this, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all the, and the other books they were going to write wasn't in existence. All they had was the Old Testament the law and the prophets and the Psalms. We have the Old Testament. We have the New Testament. We have the Bible online. We have television ministries. We have the Bible app. We, oh my Lord, we got all the social media. We have commentaries. We have volumes. We have Christian universities. We have Christian schools. We have all this stuff. We have so much more than they had at the time Paul wrote what he wrote. So much more. My question is, with all that we have, what effect are we having on God's name? Do people look at us? Now, I ain't talking about somebody jealous because the Lord blessed you. That's their problem. I'm talking about our behavior. Do people look at us and want Jesus or not? So while we're preoccupied with what we want him to do for us, he's asking, are you paying attention to what you're doing to me, to my name, name, reputation? Do people love me because of you? Or do people shun me because of you? Senior citizens, do your children and grandchildren believe you're saved based, based on something other than your claim? Or do they think it's a sham? College students. Those of us colleagues. What are we doing to his name? When the world sees us. When we're at work and things aren't going well. How do we handle that? What are we doing to his name? We're always his agent. What does law, I guess, what does law enforcement think of us? 
What does attorneys think of us? What do people think of us who enter into contracts with us? What do they think of God? Jesus, when they enter, uh, uh, enter the contract with the Christian. Because you, when you were signing it, you really wanted them to know that you were a Christian. You told them about your Christianity. You told them about me. You told them about me. Now, the man won't even come to the church. I wouldn't go to that church for nothing. That whole church is messed up. Well, the whole church didn't sign that contract. One person signed that contract. Well, that's a reflection on the whole church. Okay, do you apply that rule to your family? You got a crazy uncle. Does that mean everybody in the family is crazy? Everybody, everybody got somebody in the family that messed up. Now, does that discount the whole family? Everybody got somebody that don't claim. We found him. What are we doing? Are we causing his name to be praised? Are we making him look attractive? We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost. The Jews in the Old Testament did not have the Holy Ghost. Kings had the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit moved on prophets, moved on various ones. The Holy Spirit moved on Saul. The Holy Spirit moved on uh, Samson. But, 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 but people didn't get filled That's right. with the Holy Ghost till the day of Pentecost. So we have the Holy Ghost, we have the Bible and all this. Now, notice this, notice this. all this that we have, we still need 10,000 ministries. We still need all kind of ministry helps and aids. And we're still flunking out. I think that the solution is we got to take our reflection of Jesus seriously. College students, college students, you, you are upper room on your campus. They draw their conclusions about me, about our church, about what we stand for through you. Co workers, you are upper room. You are Jesus at work. People draw their conclusions about Jesus, about Christianity, about Christians by watching you. Isn't that some responsibility? All of us, those of us of a darker hue, we are representatives of our race. Look at you. Well, our folk don't respect us. Watch, watch, watch Spectrum News. Watch the news. A, a constant parade of us doing something. Stealing, killing. You know, I was walking somewhere the other day and a lady saw me. And you know, you know the look. You know the look. She grabbed her purse. I could buy. You know, I could buy. And she grabbed her purse. And, uh, and, I, and, and I felt bad till I went home and watched the news. I tell you, just about every man I saw looked just like me. I said, oh, she, she probably thought I was him. <laughs> and I had to laugh about it. You cry about it, but you know. What kind of single, signals are we sending people about our Lord? Men, what kind of reputation uh, have we developed? Are we carrying a strong reputation by taking care of our families? Standing by our children? Standing by our families? Our wives? Working? Amen? I grew up hearing this over and over and over. Don't work too hard. 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 Don't work so hard. Don't work too hard. Don't work so hard. Don't work so hard. Don't work. Don't work so hard. My white counterpart on, on the other side of town grew up here. Work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard. Work, 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 work. If you work, you're going to get ahead. Work, that's the only way to get ahead. You got to work, work, work. Me, don't work hard, don't work hard. You know what you discover? You can't get anywhere unless you work hard. You can't get anywhere unless you work hard. Can I get a witness? I know I'm speaking in generality, but you get the point. You get the point. Not all the Jewish race made God's name to be blasphemed, but they got the point. Because some of them were living holy, but they got the point. I want to bring joy to the name of the Lord. God, I can't do for you what you've done for me. 
I can't save you because you don't need saving. I can't forgive you of your sins, Lord, because you've never sinned. I can't pull you out of a hole because there's no hole that you can get in. And if you were in a hole, I'm too young, too little to pull you out. I can't wake him up in the morning and start him on his way. For he never sleeps and he never slumbers. He's eternal. I cannot heal him for he never gets sick. So what can I do? What can I do? I can at least conduct myself in a manner so as to bring praise on his name. And, and if I don't work up to praise, ought to at least not go live where they blaspheme him. I mean, we're making progress if they say, well, what do you think about him as a Christian? Well, I hadn't come to a conclusion yet. That's better than <laughs> I blaspheme the Lord because of the way he lives. Everybody who want to make God look good, meet me at the altar.